Okay, in the previous uh, section, I talked about how to use classical hypothesis testing or confidence intervals to test hypotheses about a single beta j at a time. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to test a single hypothesis involving more than one of the beta j. So previously, we were talking about hypothesis testing about a single beta j. Now, we may be interested in a hypothesis like whether beta 1 is equal to beta 2. So as an example, we may be interested in analyzing a model with wages as a dependent variable and we are interested in return to education from two-year junior college versus four-year college. So in this case, we are interested in testing hypotheses whether beta 1, that is return to junior college, education it is equal to returns to university education that is one year of extra education at a junior college is worth the same as a one year of extra education at the university and our alternative hypothesis would be that junior college marginal return is less than the return to education from a university. It will be tempting to use a simple t-test of the form because we already have these two coefficient values from our regression output and we'll have standard errors from the regression output as well. But it is not as straightforward as it looks because of this term. Standard error it is not equal to the standard error of beta 1 hat minus standard error of beta 2 hat. Instead it is equal to the variance of beta 1 hat plus variance of beta 2 hat minus 2 times the covariance between beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat. And remember because we are talking about the standard error so we have to take the square root of it in order to extract standard error from this equation. So see this covariance is calculated based on how beta 1 and beta 2 are related to each other. So we have to take care of this term and most of the time in the regression output you will find standard error of beta 1 and standard error of beta 2 but you will not find covariance between beta 1 and beta 2 in a regression output and you have to calculate it manually and in the next video I'm going to talk about a way around this issue so that we don't have to manually calculate covariance between beta 1 and beta 2 and we're going to manipulate this equation a little bit so that we will be able to get our desired coefficient values and test hypotheses about those coefficient values. Alright, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.